The crazy bright and focused light above the dinette and RV could give any dentist chair a run for its money. Let me show you how we easily swapped it out for a more aesthetically pleasing residential fixture that looks and functions significantly better. First things first, I am not an electrician or an RV tech, so please take this video as an example of what I did on my RV, not as exact instructions or advice on what you should do with yours. First thing was to find out if the fixture I wanted to replace was powered by 12 volts or 120 volts of power. Most RV lighting is 12 volts, but there are definitely some out there that are 120 volt and only work when connected either to grid power or running off an inverter connected to the RV battery. The next step in this process was finding the 120 volt residential fixture we wanted and ordering the essential 12 volt light bulbs that make this whole upgrade work. Stick around, more on those key light bulbs later. Once I had the hardware, the first step was to disconnect the 120 volt power and the 12 volt power from my RV. This RV light is powered by 12 volts of electricity, but since the 120 volt converter on the RV will supply 12 volts of power to the circuits, even without a 12 volt battery connected, it's necessary to disconnect both. A non-contact voltage tester or multimeter can be used to determine if power has been successfully shut off. If I had a solar system installed, I need to make sure that that was shut down as well. Once the power is turned off, I removed the glass bowl. This one was held on by a decorative nut, but I've seen others that the whole bowl twists to disconnect from the mounting plate. After setting that aside, I unscrewed the mounting plate from the ceiling and pulled it down. If it was sticking to the ceiling after removing the screws, I would have run a putty knife or screwdriver between the plate and the ceiling to break it loose. If I was not confident that the power is disconnected, now would have been the time to verify with multimeter or non-contact voltage tester. The wires on RVs are typically crimped together to keep from coming apart as we travel down the road. I cut the negative wire on the RV side of the crimp and the positive wire after the 12 volt switch. Because this dinette light had a removable on-off switch, I was able to leave it connected and reuse it on the new residential fixture. If I were replacing one of the other lights in my RV that have the switch integrated into the actual fixture, then I would have needed to purchase a simple 12 volt switch to add to the wiring. If you enjoy this type of DIY project or RV tips and gear reviews, please consider subscribing to take a moment to click the thumbs up. It only takes a moment of your time, but means quite a lot to me as a creator. It is one way I know that my work is actually providing value. Now, after verifying placement of the new fixture and securing the mounting bracket according to the manufacturer's instructions, I drilled a small hole in the side of the light to mount the on-off switch. However, if we had selected a light that could not have accommodated this switch, we could have easily mounted it just to the side of the light coming out of the ceiling itself by drilling an appropriate sized hole through that panel. In this fixture, the two light bulb sockets were not already wired together, so all I had to do was twist black to black and white to white, combining them before moving on. In order to keep the switch crimped to the RV wiring, I had my wife help me hold up the fixture while I installed the switch into the side of the light and then connected the wires from the fixture to the wiring from the RV. In my specific RV, the 12 volt white wires were negative and the white with the colored stripe were positive, which was also connected to a switch with the black wires. So I connected the white with the white and the black from the fixture to the black of the switch, which then connected to the positive wire on the RV, which was white with the color stripe. Hold up, see that right there? I originally used wire nuts that came with the light fixture to connect the wires. However, I have since learned that wire nuts are not recommended for use in RVs because of the potential that they could vibrate loose. Lever nut connectors are an option as long as the location is not exposed to water, like near a water pump or outside, but the standard is waterproof butt connectors, either the crimp or solder versions, that heat shrink around the wires. So I've since updated and installed the fixture with butt connectors. The positive, negative, hot, neutral, and ground wire colors get a bit convoluted here because not all 12 volt RV lights are wired with the same color wires. Most 12 volt systems standardize on red wires for positive and black wires for negative, while most 120 volt systems in our homes have a hot wire which is black, a neutral wire that is white, and a ground wire that is either bare copper or green. But sometimes RV manufacturers use other colors, as in the case with a white and a white with a color stripe on the 12 volt system in my rig. For my research, the easy way to verify the positive side of the 12 volt wiring is to locate the wire that has the switch installed on it. But if I grab a multimeter and set it to the DC setting, when I touch the leads to each wire and the multimeter shows a positive 12 volts, the wire that the red lead is touching is the positive wire. Sometimes, if you look closely at the old fixture, it may even show positive and negative symbols at the point of connection. So, I ended up connecting the positive 12 volt wire from the RV, in this case white with a white color stripe, to the black wires from the 120 volt residential fixture with the switch in between. Then the white RV wires to the white fixture wires. The ground from the 120 volt fixture isn't necessary in this 12 volt application. And if you want to talk more about RVs, DIY projects, gear reviews, best practices, all things RVs, make sure you come over and check out our free group over at rvgearandfar.com. I'll put a link in the description below. Once both sets of wires were connected, I tucked them behind the fixture and I secured it to the mounting bracket. Now it was time to test out the light fixture. The key to using a residential fixture in a 12 volt RV system is that I have to use 12 volt light bulbs. 
12 volts of power can easily run through 120 volt wires of the fixture, but I can't use a 120 volt bulb like I would in a 120 volt setting at home. I found these cool looking 12 volt Edison style LED bulbs online. I'll put a link in the video description so you can check them out as well. This fixture took common E26 light bulb bases, but if it was different, I would have found 12 volt bulbs with the required base for that fixture. And that's something that's listed on the box of the actual light fixture that you purchase. Now, once I screwed in the 12 volt light bulbs, it was time to reconnect the 12 volt power and test out the light. Ta-da, it works. Now the benefit of using a 120 volt residential fixture in this 12 volt application was that the 12 volt specific options we found weren't working for what we wanted the space to look like. This setup is simply on or off, but if I were to swap out that switch for a 12 volt dimmer and make sure to use dimmable 12 volt LEDs, then we could adjust the brightness as well. There are definitely lots of options and ways to customize the lights in your RV. We've been using this fixture and these light bulbs daily since our family travels full time and they performed flawlessly. Hopefully by showing you the way that I used a residential 120 volt light in my 12 volt RV application has given you some ideas on ways that you may be able to customize your RV living space. Happy trails, see you at the campground.